Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special edition of Part the Mist. This is the election edition, where we ask nominees for this upcoming ADF election to send in their recorded responses of questions posed on the Facebook page. Currently, we have three people who sent in responses, and we hope to have more in the future. So we hope that this edition helps you decide who you would like to be running for ADF election. Greetings. My name is Mike Kahn, and I am running for the non-officer director position for the Mother Grove of ADF. This is a list of questions that were asked of the candidates. Uh, there are eight of them, so I will start with the beginning. Question number one is, how long have you been a member of ADF? I have been an, a member of ADF since December of 2012, uh, so that's four years and some change. I completed my dedicant path in March of 2013. I'm currently enrolled in the Generalist Study Program, so I am uh, active in the ADF study programs at this time. The second question is, what skills or experience do you have for this position? Why do you want to run for this position? Throughout my life, uh, I have been in touch with people from all walks of life. Uh, for close to a decade, I was a news photographer. I had to interact with uh, members of the public on an almost daily basis. Uh, now, I'm back uh, working in kind of a retail environment. Uh, for a video production studio, and I too have experience uh, working with uh, a wide variety of people, uh, getting to know them, forming relationships with them, um, solving problems, um, you know, things of that nature. And I think these things would really help. Uh, these are some of the skills I can bring to the, the Mother Grove is teamwork and um, communicating with other people effectively and uh, looking at problems, solving problems, helping uh, ADF uh, move forward. I accepted the position of non-officer director for the Mother Grove of ADF because I feel I could bring a unique perspective to the Mother Grove. I was a solitary for many years before uh, forming my own grove. So I feel like as one of the younger members, uh, I can maybe bring a fresh perspective on some things. Um, I feel like I could address the concerns of solitaries um, and perhaps seeing that more resources are put forth to help out those members. This is in addition to helping uh, ADF run smoothly and working for the benefit of all of its members. Question number three is, what other positions do you currently have and have had in the past? What did you enjoy about that work? Uh, the one position I currently hold right now is Grove Organizer uh, for the Proto Grove of the Gathering Waters, which is located in southwestern Illinois. Um, I really enjoy working uh, to form a community, to bring together people of diverse sets of beliefs into the common practice uh, that ADF holds uh, at its core, in its core order of ritual. Uh, I enjoy networking with other pagans and and, and really uh, serving that community uh, by bringing a consistent, effective ritual to those uh, who are interested in that. Question number four is, how do you intend to support solitary members? Uh, as I mentioned a couple questions ago, I was a solitary for uh, a few years before forming my own uh, proto-grove. And um, I feel like I have kind of a unique understanding of what solitaries go through. Um, being a solitary in ADF is hard. Uh, we don't have that community or, you know, I didn't have that community for the longest time. So you kind of have to teach yourself some of the skills that uh, go along with, uh, you know, ritual and ADF. Um, the first thing I can do is listen to their concerns. Uh, solitaries make up a large number of members in ADF. And just listening to their concerns 
and um, communicating that to the Mother Grove to see what more we can do for them is a big step. I also think that um, the resources out there right now uh, from various members who have been uh, creating things uh, over social media uh, can be used to help solitary members, um, to help them in build their practice or uh, enhance an existing practice with uh, uh, elements from uh, ADF ritual um, and Indo-European um, mythology as well. Um, I know uh, several of the clergy members put out prayers. Um, they also put out a lot of other kind of resources. Um, I've done the same thing, and I, I think a lot of this can uh, be compiled all in one place for uh, the solitaries uh, to, to find all this information that they may need. And I would like to see something done on the website, on the new website, uh, where we can get a lot of these prayers and rituals uh, that are updated and uh, put in, all in one place so people can find them easily, so they can enhance their practice uh, with the work uh, that others in ADF have done. Question number five is, what are those things that ADF does well? What do you like best about ADF from an organizational standpoint? I think ADF has done a really good job of forming a cohesive community, bringing people um, of various backgrounds and beliefs um, to gather around a common center, the ADF core order of ritual um, that is orthopraxic in focus uh, not orthodoxic, I think this is a huge strength because it allows people to express themselves in this format um, with with great results. I think on an organizational level too, you know, uh, we have elections and they go smoothly, you know, every time they come up and um, there's a lot of people who really care about the organization and the future and the vision of ADF and they're continuously stepping up to um, fill these difficult positions to move the organization forward. I think, um, I, I, I think that this is a, a great thing to see. You know, um, you know, going back to what I said earlier, you know, it really uh, forms a cohesive center uh, so that we can do the work of our druidry and contribute to uh, our pagan communities uh, all over the world. Another thing I think ADF does very well is being a balanced synthesis between scholarship and experience. You will have a lot of folks that have a lot of uh, UPG experiences that are not discounted out of hand, uh, but are recognized for what they are. Uh, but we also have an eye towards scholarship and uh, what the past has told us about the deities, ancestors, spirits. Um, so I think there's a really good balance here of the past and the present, you know, coming together to, to form a lasting tradition into the future. Question number six is, if you could make any changes or additions to the administration, ADF, bylaws, SOPs, study programs, what would they be and why? Um, you know, I think we are standing at a good place in terms of number of study programs. There's a lot of options out there. I think the one place that things could use some improvement is uh, some of the book recommendations may be out of date at this point. I think some of the questions for some of the study programs uh, in the individual courses need a little bit of updating because um, some of them are a little vague. And, you know, when I bring this up to folks that have gone through these study programs or to mentors, they would agree. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping that uh, there can be some updates made to some of these questions to kind of uh, make the process a little bit easier to kind of take some of the guesswork out of it. Question number seven is describe your style of leadership. Uh, there is a cool African proverb that I like, and it says this, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I'm very much uh, a big proponent of teamwork, 
of relationships, of talking to people to solve problems. You know, we all are going to have uh, our, a unique way of uh, meeting uh, issues and, and moving things forward. And I think approaching it as a team, you know, we're all in this together, um, is a good way to do things. Um, so I really, um, uh, I really prize clear communication, you know, knowing what's expected, you know, encouraging others, getting everybody to go as far as they can go. Cause we can't do it alone. We've, we've really got to do it together. The last question is question number eight. When you're given a new task, how do you seek creative solutions? Uh, this is an interesting question. Um, you know, I just kind of look at what I've got in front of me. Um, what kind of options I have to solve a particular problem. Um, you know, sometimes I may consult, do divination to kind of see uh, if there's something I'm not thinking about um, that I could touch on. Uh but I'm also actually a big fan of, of approaching people and getting their advice and then taking uh, that advice and looking at my own solutions and see if there's a happy medium, if there's a better way to do things, um, you know, looking at how things have been done before. There's, there's you know, stuff that has worked, of course. Um, obviously, I wouldn't go back and look at something that didn't work. But... Um, yeah, really just exploring all the options. So this is this is where wisdom comes into play. One of the virtues is looking at all the options and, and kind of uh, uh, seeing what can be done uh, to move things forward. That is the end of the list of questions. So I just want to thank uh, Jonathan of the Part the Mist podcast for allowing me uh, to submit this uh, audio answering these questions. Uh, if there are any further questions, feel free to find me on Facebook, uh, Mike Khan, K A A N, or uh, email me, uh, khan.mike at adf.org. Ask me questions. Uh, I'm sure I missed something, but I, you know, I'd like to try to cover as much as I can. Um, reach out to me, talk to me, and uh, um, I would appreciate uh, your vote. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Crystal Groves. I am the current secretary of ADF, but I am running for re-election for the 2017 elections. And there are a list of questions going around that people would like to have the candidates answer. So I am providing my answers, which will also be listed in the bio for your ballot. Um, I highly suggest that members take the time to really review these bios, kind of get a feel for... Um, what people are expecting if they've become these positions that they're running for and maybe some background on them. Um, I also try to pay attention throughout the year on how I feel people, um, I want to say interact with other members or respond to situations. Every year ADF kind of has some sort of, I don't want to say blow up, but heated argument it seems to be the nice way to say it uh, regarding some tactics topic. And um, I really pay attention to people and how they react to these situations so that if they do eventually run for a position, it allows me to see how they may handle these kind of, of heated and argumentative situations. So um, aside from that, uh, I'll go ahead and start with some of these questions. I'm um, adding an extra one that Thexalon Dave had posted on the ADF general discussion group. Uh, that I felt is sort of pertinent. But the first question on this list is, how long have you been a member of ADF? Fairly simple. Uh, I joined in 2003. I've been fairly visible, but I kind of consider the process constantly learning. Um, I've been clergy since 2010, but even then, I've, I sort of feel like a noob in that department even still because of that continual process of education. Number two... What skills or experience do you have for this position, and why do you want to run for this position? My skills range quite broadly. 
Um, I used to run Cedar Lake Grove in Baltimore for about 12 years. I was in leadership positions there. I've been running my own business for about three years, uh, which is a web development business and requires a lot of project management skills and um, customer service. So that's a very large skill set that I think any Mother Grove member should have is some sort of customer service or uh, service-oriented skill set. I'm running my own protogrove right now for about two years, and I've been a preceptor in the past for about four years, uh, obviously secretary for the last two years, and I've been in, I mean, various office jobs if you're looking at just a secretarial skill set. Um, so I feel like I've got my bases covered there, but I mean, there's always ways I can improve on things. So, you know, I don't want to think that just because I have that experience, I'm going to be great at the position, but I feel like I could do the position and acknowledging that I can always improve on that. Um, I'm running for reelection because I feel I have more that I can contribute to the Mother Grove. I believe that I provide a balance on the Mother Grove that is needed to help keep things organized and, of course, transparent to satisfy both the administration, which includes the Mother Grove, and also the membership. I kind of want to help um, balance that divide between the Mother Grove and the membership. Uh, I feel like I'm outspoken, but that I listen. I am dedicated, but I am flexible. And I might be in leadership, but I also remember that I'm also a member of ADF. So I have to look at that position from that viewpoint. How would I want the secretary to serve ADF? And I try to keep that balance in my viewpoints when I serve in a position. What other positions do you currently have or have had in the past? And what do you enjoy about that work? My current positions in ADF, I try to keep them fairly minimal. I don't like to overcomplicate things. I currently serve as the chief of the Naturalist Guild. I was just elected last month, and I'm the registrar, registrar of the Naturalist Guild, which I've been for several years. It's a very simple job, just making sure people who vote um, retain their membership and to accept new members into the guild. And then secretary would really be the only other position that I've hold, I hold. However, I also serve as a social media moderator, which kind of is its own beast on the side to begin with. Um, what I enjoy most about these positions is that it allows me to use my skill set to provide a service for ADF. Uh, it makes me useful to the organization, and I believe that my ethics and goals for transparency and efficiency of the Mother Grove are served well by that experience. Question number four, how do you intend to support solitary members? This is always a tricky question for Mother Grove members. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't have a solution that solves the issues that we ha that the solitary members have with being well represented in ADF. I've never personally been a solitary, um, but I've always been approachable. I don't think there's a miracle answer to that problem, but I acknowledge that it exists and I'm open to resolutions and trying out new things to to help bridge that gap that the solitary members seem to feel in ADF with not being well represented or not having that exposure to ritual or group contact or even to leadership. So I'm open to ideas. I don't have the answers to that, but I'm not always going to have the answers. So feel free to contact me on that. I've always been very approachable. You can either friend me on Facebook, send me emails, whichever. I'm, I think my phone number is even posted, so feel free to give me a call. Number five, what are those things that ADF does well, and what do you like best about ADF from an organizational standpoint? I feel ADF is probably the top organization in regards to the fact that it's blessed with so many intelligent people that have contributed in so many different ways. And it's not just the, the stuff that's visible, like the books and the study programs and all this amazing work that people are, who are way smarter than me have been able to put together over the years, but also the behind the scenes people that for all of ADF's pros and cons, those people, I feel in the back end of ADF, really take the brunt of some of the negativity that can sometimes be associated with ADF, but they really work without any kind of attribution for that work or any kind of recognition. So I feel like the people that are dedicated to that still want to do that work and 
don't really get recognized for it. That's one of the things I love about ADF is it's just that dedication of the people that are willing to do that without looking for this, this glory or this pretend power that people sometimes perceive that we're going for when we're running for leadership positions. It's just not there. I don't get paid for it. It's not a glorious thing that we do, but the people still do it. I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, I feel like our study programs are awesome. Uh, I feel like that the resources that we have as an organization are some of our best assets. Um, along with the acceptance of the various hearth, hearth cultures under one unified core, the quarter of ritual is one thing that I really love about ADF because it allows ADF to show that people from different cultures can come together under one unified purpose or structure and it works. You know, I feel like maybe that's a good example, even just for the world with, with everything that goes on right now with the chaos and everything that allows us to show that it's possible to get along. And you don't have to be in the same religion. You don't have to be in the same mindset as long as you all have a, the same focus and the same goal. So that's one of the things that I love. Uh, number six, if you could make any changes or additions to the administration of ADF, such as bylaws, study programs, etc., what would it be and why? Two things that I'd like to see improve in ADF is to make it easier for people to contribute and easier for us to create dialogue with each other. Uh, whether it's through getting that other people into leadership positions, getting their work on the ADF website, getting their voices heard, and opening up that discussion with others in leadership, I feel like we could do better at making sure membership concerns are addressed that way. So again, kind of back to bridging that gap between the mother grove or leadership and the membership, but I feel like we could improve that dialogue. It's something that I've been trying to do with the transparency as secretary already and would continue to do if I was elected as secretary again for the next two years. Uh, I describe my style of leadership. Um, my style of leadership has always been to be firm and flexible, which sounds contradictory, but I'll try to explain that. Um, I want to make sure things are done right and efficient and logical, but I don't want to do it in this for this at the sake of the membership or the future of ADF. So it does not mean that the membership is always going to agree with my viewpoints and vice versa, but as long as both sides are heard and considered, I feel like the disagreements can bring forth the acceptable challenges and growth that the organization needs. So it's remaining firm, but being flexible and making sure I'm listening to people and considering their viewpoints, not just hearing what they're saying, but actually listening and taking it internally and processing that information. Number eight, when you're given a new task, how do you seek creative solutions? The first thing I usually do when I'm given a new task is obviously to research what's been done previously that relates to that task. I think that's important to consider history when resolving existing issues so you're not reinventing that wheel. Um, afterwards, I usually get input from people I feel that have suitable knowledge or experience already that can provide that guidance or insight that I might need. And then I take my own experience and research into consideration to provide that perspective based on what I know and what I've learned. And then ultimately what we all want the outcome to be. The goal is not to stay only on my track when resolving a problem, but to use the resources available, which ADF has plenty of. And then the question that Thexal and Dave posted is, what constraints and challenges do you anticipate placing limits on your work in ADF, such as illnesses, financial concerns, travel restrictions, etc.? I honestly can't think of any constraints that I would have. Um, as secretary, there's really no financial concerns that I would have. Um, a lot of the festivals that I do attend are on the East Coast, but I can I can budget for festivals on the West Coast. Not that festivals really have anything to do with being secretary, except for the annual meeting. Um, again, the illness stuff and the legal challenges, those are non-existent. Um, I have a business and work from home for the most part, um, and that allows me the free time to adjust my schedule as needed. I, I don't have a certain time frame that I have to be working, so I'm flexible when it comes to meetings or chats or things like that. Um, I don't know if short-term memory can be an issue, um, for challenges. Uh, I do tend to forget things, so I 
I always ask people, if I don't respond right away, I may have read your message, whether it's Facebook or an email, and then just forgot about it the next day. So don't, don't hesitate to contact me again or, you know, it's never pestering me, but feel free to ping me and let me know that, you know, you have something out there that you'd like me to address. I think that's it for the questions that I've seen so far. Um, again, feel free to email me if you come across something you'd like to know and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope to see you guys at Wellspring or good luck with voting. Just make sure you vote with your conscience and keep an eye year long, not just during election time for your potential candidates. Thanks. Sacred Gifts, Reciprocity in the Gods. This book is all about reciprocity, the give and take of life, and how the religions of the ancient world relied upon this gift exchange to even exist. Just as people give to each other in life, so may we give to the gods and spirits, expecting blessings in return. This timeless way of looking at our dealings with the gods mirrors how our own society holds together even today. We give love and aid to our friends and family, and they return the favor. And we can give love and aid to the spirits so that they can return the favor to us. I give so that you may give. We give so that they may give. Reciprocity, an important concept in paganism. Sacred Gifts, Reciprocity in the Gods is available on Amazon.com. Hi, I'm Reverend Melissa Birchfield, and you're listening to Part the Mist, a Druid podcast created and hosted by the members of Columbia ADF. Hello, everyone. This is the Reverend Rob Henderson. I'm running for non-officer director on the Mother Grove this year, and uh, Part the Mist podcast sent me some questions to answer for you, so here are my answers. Question one, how long have you been a member of ADF? I joined in 1996. So it's not quite been 21 years now. My membership is almost old enough to drink. Uh, question two, what skills or experience do you have for this position? Why do you want to run for this position? I was on the Mother Grove from 2001 to 2003, and I've been the senior druid of my grove for 17 years now, so I do have some experience in serving on a nonprofit's board of directors. While I have been around for a while, and it may seem like I'm a big name druid, I think that my time working locally in my grove and my community gives me my own perspective on how ADF can best serve its members, particularly at the local level. Question three, what other positions do you currently have and have had in the past? What did you enjoy about that work? I once wrote a blog article for my grove blog mentioning every SLG and ADF office I'd ever held. There were 14 of them at the time, and I forgot a couple of them, and I've added another one since then, so... Um, I could spend a lot of time here trying to list all of them. I'll stick to the highlights, in my opinion. Um, Senior Druid of Shining Lakes Grove. For 17 years, the big focus of my spiritual community work, by far. I've been chair of the Grove Organizing Committee. I've been the ADF office manager back before we had the office in Arizona. Uh, I was the Great Lakes Regional Director back when that was a Mother Grove position. That's when I served on the Mother Grove from 2001 to 2003. And I'm currently head of both the Hellenic Kin and the Liturgist Guild. As you can see, I have a passion for serving the community and helping people and groups develop their own spiritual and organizational practices. And I have the ter determination to keep it going for a while. Uh, question four, how do you intend to support solitary members? I I've complained about this before, but whether we like it or not, our solitary members are primarily going to interact with the rest of ADF via the internet. I'd like to see us focus on providing non-Facebook options for all of our members to share information and conversation, including a better interface for our already existing forums and mailing lists. Maybe we can come up with something a little more mobile friendly than what we have right now. Or maybe we should just remind people that we have a forum interface for our email lists, because apparently people like that. Um, the Solitary Druid Fellowship uh, from a few years ago was a decent idea in general, but I thought there was a little too much em emphasis on separating people from interacting with others and focusing on being alone in nature as the goal of Druidry, and there should have been more focus on our core concepts of piety and reciprocity that you can certainly have in your life without being part of a working group, unless you're literally a hermit living out in the woods you probably interact with humans, and the way you interact with humans 
reflects the way you interact with the kindreds and vice versa. I would, I wish that there had been a little more of that in the SDF. And for what it's worth, I would love to work with someone to develop a new version that does um, work a little more with those concepts. Question five, what are the things that ADF does well? What do you like best about ADF from an organizational standpoint? I think we're very good at creating local groups and study programs. Our size and the talents of our members give us the opportunity to work on big projects like that in a way that other groups maybe have a harder time doing. That's been one of the big advantages of working with ADF over the years, in my opinion. Question six, if you could make any changes or additions to the administration of ADF bylaws, SOP study programs, what would they be and why? Probably the only one that jumps to mind for me is I would like to see some formal rubrics developed for our various study programs so that our reviews and approvals can be a little more consistent between students. I know at least in my time working with study program, whether you get approved or what you have to do to get approved in terms of writing um, your coursework up can vary wildly from reviewer to reviewer. Um, that can be good and bad at the same time. I'd like to see us resolve that get something a little more consistent across the board for all of our students. Question seven, describe your style of leadership. I prefer to delegate the projects that I can't handle myself and work feverishly on the ones that I can. That pretty much sums up my life. Question eight, when you're given a new task, how do you see creative solutions? I ask myself who the task is intended to benefit and ask them how we can design it to best help them. We should be serving the people that we're supposed to be serving, not the people who are doing the task. Uh, and if I don't already have ideas on the subject, I will seek out people who know more about it than I do and ask them about it. I don't pretend to know everything, despite what some of you people may say about me. Um, I, I value the opinions of people who know more about a topic than I do if I'm to be working on that topic. Standard computer programmer thing. If you're trying to do a simulation, you ask people who do it. You don't just guess. Uh, okay, that's it. If you have any questions, I think I can provide my contact info for the podcast page. And uh, please take the time to vote this year. Thanks.